So on that note, I'm going to pass over to Sotiris. Sotiris, over to you, please take it away. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Bernal, for the introduction. And hi, everyone. Great to have so many people from all over the world again with us. Okay, so first things first, a quick introduction. Uh, we are here today to go through the top 10 must-have digital marketing tools. My name is Sotirios. I'm going to take you through all of these tools and today's webinar. I'm originally from Greece. That's why my name is a bit odd, but I lived most of my life as an expat. I worked and lived in London. I did the same in Dubai, in Singapore. And weirdly enough, I'm now again based in Dubai. So my journey started within digital agencies. These are a couple of the agencies that I work with. From there, I switched to teaching, mainly with General Assembly. I also contracted with Facebook. And now I am collaborating, obviously, with General Assembly still, but I have my own mini company on the side. Okay, so that was a quick intro. Let's go straight into the point of today's session, which is tools that digital marketers use. But before we reveal the tools, we need to take a step back and ask ourselves what is digital marketing and what digital marketing entails, right? So digital marketing is a collection of disciplines. It's not a monolith, right? So if we take our brain and we cut it in half, we have people that are more, let's say, left brain, data driven, and they work in performance marketing, paid media, analytics, e-commerce. We have people that are more creative, right brain, they work in branding, content, UX, and digital marketing also includes a lot of strategy, a lot of project management, and a lot, a lot, a lot of work in general. So today, we are going to go through tools that can help you do a better job across all of these categories. So we don't just have 10 tools, we have a lot actually to go through. Now, why we need tools? Because the world moves at the speed of tech. Everything is getting digitized. Everything is going online. And we need to hire tools that are going to help us become more productive, more effective, make better decisions. And therefore, we can collaborate basically with the AI and the machines to do a much better job for our companies. We are going to go through a lot of tools today. But one thing that you need to remember is that you don't need to hire all of them you need to hire only those that can help you to become more effective and they can help you to increase your productivity. Nowadays, we live in a digital landscape that we have thousands of tools, literally, and not every tool is for everyone. It depends on the business that you are, the context, and also the market, perhaps, that you are based on. So first things first, right? Some fundamental tools that we need to have in our arsenal. We need to establish a digital presence and we need to be discoverable online, which means that if we want to market our companies, we need to have some form of platform or website available, which means that first, we need a website, perhaps. And there are a lot of ways to build websites, very simple software that most of you are using. Let's say WordPress, if we want information or blogs, Shopify for e-commerce, Wix, maybe building mobile apps either Android or iOS, Mazendo and so forth, right? So that's pure fundamentals. We're not really talking about tools. We're talking about the underlying infrastructure. However, there are a couple of tools that you may want to consider. For example, if you want to have a presence on the Facebook ecosystem, if you want to have a presence on Facebook, Instagram, and everything that is under the Facebook umbrella, the very first tool that you need to consider is to sign up for Facebook Business Manager. So what is Facebook Business Manager? Facebook Business Manager is a tool that helps you to manage everything that you own under the Facebook ecosystem, pages and Instagram accounts. And also it helps you to manage in one place all the different ad accounts that you have for advertising purposes. How can you sign up? You go to business.facebook.com, you get started with your personal logins, and from there, you basically go ahead with uh, registering your company. I'm going to try to share as many links as possible in the chat today, so have a look in the chat um, for all the tools that we're going to discuss. 
And if you have any questions, of course, drop them in the Q&A, right? So from time to time, we're going to pause to ask questions. Another tool that we need to have in our arsenal, if we have a physical location, let's say if we are a restaurant, if we are a store, if we have an office, if we are a salon, a barbershop, we need to register our company in Google Maps because it is very important to be discoverable there, which means that we need yet another tool that is called Google My Business. So Google My Business is a tool basically that you're going to sign up and that's how you're going to register the address of your store on Google Maps. You will go create a profile, you will type in the address, and Google is going to verify in a very effective but very traditional way. They're going to send you a postcard with the mail that includes a four-digit code. You're going to open it up, verify your profile, and that's how you can have a profile on Google Maps. So that's some of the tools that we need as the underlying infrastructure of everything that we do, right? Now, from here, of course, we're going to explore a lot more interesting tools. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to be able to measure how we are doing online. When we need to be able to measure if people come to our site, if people come to our mobile app, what they do there, are they converting, are they not converting? So depending on what type of assets you have, if you have, for example, websites to manage, you can work with tools like Google Analytics and Tag Manager. Most of you are very familiar with those tools. We need Google Analytics to understand who is coming in our website and what they do. We need Google Tag Manager to understand, to track basically what matters, not really to get information, but to facilitate the tool to track everything that matters. And from there, we have alternatives, of course. So we have Adobe Analytics, if you don't want to, let's say, work with Google Analytics. We have a couple of startups that they try to replicate what Google Analytics does. And we have more specialized tools that we use to get additional information like Hotjar. For example, Hotjar is a specialized tool that can help you to understand how people use your website. For example, it will generate heat maps, it will generate scroll maps, and it will also record what people do behind the scenes when they actually access your website. So you can understand the inefficiencies and optimize everything better. So these are some of the mainstream analytics tools that we have in place. If you are now a SaaS product, like a technology product, people go and subscribe and then they use your product in various ways. You may need to hire different type of tools. So you may need to, to hire tools like Heap, Mixpanel, or Amplitude. These type of tools now, what they do is, they are quite similar with Google Analytics, but they go a lot more in depth when it comes to what is happening, for example, within Netflix, what is happening when people subscribe to an email marketing software. We call them product analytics tools. And that's a couple of them that we have available in the market, right? To share a couple of links, just for your reference. One tool is Mixpanel. Another very popular tool in this context is HIP. And these are, again, product analytics tools. The difference is that they are not entirely marketing oriented. They are not really there to help you understand perhaps how your marketing is performing. They are there to help you understand how your product is performing. What happens when people register and they go inside your platform and they use it and they play with it. And if you are a mobile app, Yes, you can use Google Analytics, but we have other specialized tools here, right? So we have App Annie, we have Adjust, we have Apps Flyer, and of course, a lot more. But these are, in my opinion, at least the top tools that we have in the industry to track and measure how our mobile app is performing, right? So Apps Flyer and Apps Annie, I also use them in the past. They are really, really good tools. And then from there, we have also Adjust. Uh, which is another option. In the market, you will find a lot more options. But the bottom line is that if you have an app, you need to be able to track what is going on inside the app. And these are the top 10 tools from an analytics standpoint, right? So this is just one area of digital marketing. And again, you don't have to hire all of them or create an account on all of them. You have to understand what type of business you are monitoring and you are managing and you have to hire only the tools that will help you achieve 
let's say your marketing and business objectives. If you are software as a service, consider the middle column. If you are a website, probably go with analytics or Adobe. If you are a mobile app, you can go with the app analytics tools. Now, moving forward, this is just the analytics world or a little bit of the analytics world. We need a lot more and we're going to go a lot more into marketing, right? To make things more interesting. We need to be able to communicate with our community and customers. We need to be able to speak with people, which means that we need a CRM tool. And I classify the top 10 CRM tools always in my opinion, just to be fair. In context of, let's say from beginner to advanced, if you are an SME and you want something, let's say easy to use, and you want something very straightforward that you can perhaps activate tomorrow, then my recommendation is go with either HubSpot or MailChimp or my favorite tool. And that's again, a personal opinion is MailerLite. If you are, let's say, looking for a tool that is simple, it's going to be very straightforward. It's going to be easy for beginners to get started with, let's say, organizing your databases, sending emails, and perhaps also SMS, then you can actually use MailerLite. And that's my personal recommendation for SMEs and small companies. Of course, we have tools that are a little bit more advanced. They have more functionalities, right? So in the middle tier, we have tools like Active Campaign, Send in Blue, Get Response, Campaign Monitor. These tools, they are probably going to be a little bit more advanced as opposed to, let's say, the beginner-friendly ones. They're going to help you create, let's say, email marketing drip campaigns. Some of them are also going to help you send SMS. They are going to have more advanced segmentation, better integrations, and so forth. And if you are looking for the absolute best, then from there, you can go Salesforce, you can go SendGrid, you can go Oracle NetSuite. There are a lot of offerings basically for enterprises, right? So these are a couple of CRM tools, actually the top 10 CRM tools always uh, with my standards, right? That you have to choose from. You need just one, you don't need all of them, right? And again, I'm going to keep repeating it to uh, be clear, right? So you don't need all of these tools. You need only one tool that fits the context of what you're doing for CRM. You need a couple of analytics tools perhaps, and one tool for every category, right? What is the next category now? And in the meantime, again, feel free to type any questions you have in the chat, in, uh, sorry, not in the chat, in the Q&A, to be able to answer them later, right? Content marketing. So we have a lot of exciting tools, actually, uh, for content marketing, and a lot of very new tools that can help us do a better job. So under content marketing, we need tools for designing UX, we need tools for copywriting, and we need tools to distribute our content. What are these tools now? For design and UX, we have the almighty Canva coming from the amazing land of Australia. Most of you already know Canva. It's a globally known company that can help you design. Now, if you are a little bit of an alternative type of person and you don't want to use Canva, there is also a competitor which is called Pablo. Uh, Pablo is a simpler version of Canva, I would say, right? So you can use it to design Facebook posts, banners, um, and anything else that falls under design very quickly and very easily. So these two tools, even, even if you're not a designer, will help you to create presentations, social media posts, videos, and a lot of different collaterals, Canva or Pablo which is, let's say, a simpler version, if we have to call it like that. From there, we have a lot more specialized tools. I'm going to leave Photoshop out. We all know Photoshop. So what else can we use? If your job now is to design websites or to collaborate, let's say, with developers, create what we call wireframes, there are three tools that I would recommend, right? So one tool to create wireframes very easily and very effectively is Balsamic. They always have a free trial, so you can actually go and sign up for an account and it will help you to design websites, the wireframes, only the skeleton, like it will help you to more or less put together how you want your website to look, uh, how the website is supposed to behave and so forth. We also have Figma that is also very popular in Singapore, which is both 
a wireframing, but also a collaborative tool. And it will help you also design user flows of how, let's say, maybe applications and technology products will work. And from there, we have another tool which is a little bit more creative and visual, which is called Invision. And we use this tool basically to um, communicate to our web developers how the website is supposed to look so they can actually take uh, everything and develop it, right? So Invision is also another great tool uh, that if you are a UX designer or you just want to manage a website project or an app project, should be in your arsenal. Now, these are a couple of tools for design, right? We have now tools that are relevant to copywriting. First of all, I'll start with the middle one, which is Grammarly. You need to have Grammarly because it's going to correct your grammar, your errors, your spelling, especially if you are not a native English speaker, right? So the number one tool I will suggest to everyone who is a copywriter or has to write content is Grammarly. Unless you were a genius in, let's say, literature, then you don't need it. Then we have tools like Jarvis. So what is Jarvis actually? So we have a new generation of tools that are using AI technology to produce content. So if you feel stuck and you say, oh my God, I can't really create, for example, a Facebook copy, uh, or I can't really come up with a Facebook headline, or I want to create an article, but I don't have any idea how to start, or anything that is related to copywriting. Tools like Jarvis help you to get started and solve this problem. They write content for you. Obviously, it's a robot, which means that you will need to correct it and you will need to actually enhance the content, right? But this is what the tool is supposed to do. It is supposed to be a copywriter, uh, a virtual copywriter, right? And we have a lot of other competitors. This is just one tool that does uh, exactly this job. And the last copywriting tool that maybe is interesting to use is called Headline Analyzer. So Headline Analyzer is a quite cool tool that is going to be very helpful for those of you who, are, who create Facebook ads or who create, let's say, email marketing, uh, subject lines. So you can actually sign up for free in the link that I said in the chat and you can analyze headlines. So you can write, for example, this is my headline something very boring, like what I did now. And the tool will actually look at the headline, whether it's a blog post headline or anything else, doesn't matter. And it will score it. It will score it based on, let's say, whether you are using power words, whether you are using emotional words, whether you are using, let's say, uncommon words that are going to stand out. It will score it based on the sentiment level or whether there is clarity and so forth. And it will score it also from an SEO point of view, right? So it's a really, really interesting tool that will help you actually to become a better copywriter. Because if you work, um, let's say, if, if in your mind you say, okay, I'm going to, to get a good score here, then you will be pushed to actually do a little bit better when you are giving titles to anything in the context of digital marketing, right? So headline analyzer is um, a very interesting tool like that. And there is also a Chrome extension, as you can see from the pop-up, right? That's a couple of tools in the context of copywriting. So we've seen five plus three for copywriting, and we have another two for distribution here. So what do we mean distribution? We need to distribute our content, our posts. We need to publish on social media. There are a couple of tools that can help us do this job. Actually, there are a lot of tools. These are just two of the tools that maybe they are the easier to, let's say, get started with, right? If you are very active in the Facebook ecosystem, so if you are very active, for example, on Instagram and Facebook, you can schedule everything for free with the Creator Studio. What is the Creator Studio? Is a hub powered by Facebook that will help you to schedule all your posts in advance, both on Facebook and also on Instagram. So you don't have to post, let's say, um, through the app in real time. And it's a free tool, meaning you don't have to actually pay anything, right? So all you have to do is you need to register your account, uh, register your page, and off we go. From there, if you are using, let's say, a lot of platforms, if you are using, let's say, LinkedIn and Pinterest and this and that, 
you will need something more powerful and something more holistic because this tool is only for the Facebook ecosystem, right? So in that sense, you can use tools like HotSuite that can help you to manage basically posting across all the social media uh, accounts that you own. And personally, I'm not really using um, HotSuite. I'm using a tool that is called PostFity. Nobody knows it, but it is very cheap. It's not in the slides, but it is very cheap and very effective, right? So this tool can help me to schedule all my LinkedIn posts in advance and schedule all my content in whatever um, basically website, uh, social media website I'm using, right? So let me share you the link of the tool that I'm using. Now, it doesn't really uh, cooperate with me now, unfortunately, but you got the link so you can visit it on your own. That's 10 tools in the context of content marketing. Now, what about other areas of digital marketing? SEO. We have a lot of tools relevant to SEO, right? So why we need them? Because we want to be discoverable. We want to optimize our organic presence and we want to be found organically. First things first, what are the top 10 tools? There are some fundamentals that we need to have and they're called the search consoles. So if you have a website and you care about SEO, the very first thing that you need to do in life is you need to go to search.google.com slash search console and create an account. So you can manage basically everything SEO related in the Google universe. You can do exactly the same thing with Bing. So the equivalent of the Google search console for uh, the Bing universe is called Bing Webmaster Tools, right? So this is the link, basically, this is the website. I'm just going to share the link in the chat. So it does whatever the Search Console does for Google, but for the Bing ecosystem, right? And if you want something that is a little bit more, let's say, non-biased, then Arefs, which is an amazing company that has a lot of SEO tools, they have their own version of the Search Console, right? So if you go to app.arefs.com slash dashboard, you can connect your website. And in my opinion, also this search console is a little bit more helpful for beginners because it is going to give you a lot more information on, let's say, how your website is doing, what are the problems on your website and so forth, right? So, and it's also free, at least for a couple of projects or small websites, this dashboard here from Arefs is free, which is amazing. So that's the first type of tools that we need in, a, in the context of SEO. From there, we need also tools that have to do with keyword research. We need to be able to track basically what are the best keywords, how much sales volume is coming from, let's say, this phrase or that phrase. And to do that, we can use various different tools. There are a lot of them in the market. There is SEM RAS that I don't have here in the slides, but I have other tools like the Word Tracker. So the word tracker is a tool that you can come here and for free, it will tell you basically how much search volume comes, how many people are typing, let's say, certain keywords and phrases every month. And why I recommend this tool is because it allows you to look for search volume not only on Google, but on Amazon, on YouTube, and on eBay also. And it's very, very beginner friendly, very easy to understand what is going on. You can use it 12 times every day for all the different territories. If you want something more advanced, then the best link that you have to, to bookmark basically is the one that I'm going to reveal now, right? So the whole suite of AREFs tools, basically, right? So AREFs, they have a lot of uh, basically very, very valuable tools. Uh, that allow you to actually research not only uh, tools based, not only keywords on Google, but also on YouTube and on a lot of other uh, platforms, right? So this whole website actually is very, very valuable in the context of SEO. So let me share the link with you. And if you want something even more advanced or let's say more detailed, then you have to create an account with Google Ads. You have to actually create a Google Ads account and within your Google Ads account, you will find a tool that is called the Keyword Planner. 
and the keyword planner will tell you how many times people Google for certain keywords and phrases in a given location. So after you sign up with a Google Ads, uh, Google Ads and you create an account, you can go to tools and settings. And from here, you can go to the keyword planner and the keyword planner will go, is going to reveal how many people are looking for certain keywords and phrases, right? So if I type, for example, here, coffee, and I look for the results, here we go. I'm going to get a lot of information on sales demand, right? So that's another tool that is a must have for SEO purposes, right? And of course, we have a lot more tools in the context of SEO. Another tool that is very old, and sometimes we need to assess the health of a website and the inefficiencies is Screaming Frog. Those of you who are into SEO for a long time, you definitely know the tool. So Screaming Frog is an SEO spider basically, right? So it scans a website and it can download basically all the page titles, all the meta descriptions, or the, the number of links. So we can have a full picture of what is happening uh, from an SEO point of view on a website, right? So that's the best spider I would say that we have available in the market. I have a couple more tools here. So there is a tool that I often also use in a lot of my lectures, which is called Uber Suggest, which is powered by Neil Patel. And this tool is kind of a Swiss army knife for SEO, which means that it has keyword research capabilities. It can give you keyword ideas. It can explore, let's say, how much traffic is coming from various websites. But we typically use the tool for identifying backlinks and understanding how popular our websites when it comes to link building, right? So if you go to the last, uh, let's say, menu here, the SEO Explorer, and you type in, let's say, a website URL, and you identify the mountains and the hills, it's getting harder every day. Then the tool is going to assess how popular is this website, how many backlinks are coming to this specific page, where are they coming from, and so forth, right? So it's a very, very important tool to have in the context of search engine optimization. And the last one that I have, and I found it very interesting and important, basically there are two tools, is the Meta SEO Inspector. So what is the Meta SEO Inspector? It is a Chrome extension, actually. It's not really a very elaborate tool. It is a Chrome extension that you can activate on any website and you can understand on the fly what is the page title, basically, of a website, what is the meta description, what is the primary headline, the secondary headline, and so forth, right? So the Meta SEO Inspector is a free extension. You can come to this link that I'm going to share again in the chat. You can attach it to your Chrome, and you can go to any website and on the fly identify all the meta elements in the bucket, right? For those of you who are using WordPress, Yoast also is an amazing plugin that will help you to activate and implement SEO. Uh, a lot better as opposed to doing it, let's say, all on your own. That's the top 10 tools that typically we have in the context of SEO. There is also another tool that I think I forgot to put in the list, to be fair, that is extremely important, which will help you to identify the speed of a page and optimize the speed of the page. The tool is called GP Metrics. And in my opinion, is the best tool to help you understand how fast or slow is a page. Why this is the case? Because GP metrics, at contrast with the page speed insights that is powered by Google, is going to reveal a lot of the metrics that really matter when it comes to how fast uh, or slow is a website in the eyes of Google. It's going to give you metrics like, for example, uh, how effective is your layout, how fast your website is loading, let's say, the biggest elements, how much time your website takes to respond, for example, when somebody clicks, and so forth. So when the tool does this magic here, you're going to get what I mean in a moment, right? So this is the best tool to understand how effective is your speed optimization, which is very, very important for uh, search engine optimization. Okay, I'm going to let it load perhaps for another 10 to 15 seconds. And in the meantime, let me check. Okay, here we go. I was about to check the questions, but we're going to do that in the next 10 minutes. So the tool is going to give you here basically metrics like 
first contentful paint, large contentful paint, what is the full loading time, how much time it takes for this page to be interactive, and a wealth of information on what is wrong basically with this page when it comes to speed. Moving forward now from SEO, which is kind of a niche uh, discipline within digital marketing. What else do we need? We need obviously paid media tools. We need to run ads. And in order to run ads, we have a lot of different tools that maybe we need to have in our arsenal, depending on which channels we're going to activate. So if we want to be active in mainstream channels, we are going to use tools like Facebook ads, part of Facebook Business Manager. We're going to use tools like Google ads. We're going to use tools like LinkedIn ads. Very straightforward. If we want now to go a little bit alternative, we need to sign up with TikTok ads. For those of you who maybe don't know where to go to sign up with basically TikTok ads, um, this is the URL. So go to ads.tiktok.com and sign up for an account, right? So that's basically the place to go if you want to start running campaigns on TikTok. We can run ads on Twitter. Again, the URL is ads.twitter.com. You can run ads on Snapchat. You can run ads on Pinterest. And if you want to be, let's say, even more alternative, or if you have a specific niche that you are marketing for, then you can consider Amazon advertising. You can consider Spotify advertising. So I think it's called Spotify for Brands, the actual page that we need to go, yes, and sign up for an account ads.spotify.com. A lot of people listen to music through Spotify. So to complement your radio ads, Spotify is an amazing channel to use. And last, we have channels that are a little bit more alternative, native advertising, like platforms that can do that, like Outbrain and Tabula. So what is native advertising? So native advertising means that you are going to present an ad under let's say an article or under existing content so when you read an article in the bottom there are other let's say suggestions some of these suggestions are sponsored content so companies like outbrain and companies like the one that i'm going to let's say show you now which is called tabula i believe they do exactly that they help you to run native advertising right so when it comes to paid media, you can see it's not only about Facebook and Google. That's something that I always say. There are a lot more opportunities out there, obviously depending on the countries that you are in and the industry uh, that you are focusing on. Not everything is applicable to everyone, right? That's a couple of tools relevant to paid media. And we have even more now, depending on exactly what you want to do and what you want to achieve, right? The next set of tools that we're going to discuss and we're going to reveal our tools that will help you to visualize your data. So what about reporting? Yes, we have Excel, we have Google Sheets, we have PowerPoint, we have Keynote. But if you want to modernize your reporting, you need slightly different tools. You need Data Studio plus a tool that is called Supermetrics. What is Data Studio? Data Studio is a tool that will help you to take basically your data and create dashboards that they live online, that are easy to consume uh, by everyone within the organization, that are completely automated and so forth. And super, super metrics is one of the many data connectors, as we call them. So what is a data connector? So a data connector is a, a software that will help you to connect, for example, data from Instagram, from Facebook, from LinkedIn, from any platform to tools like Data Studio or equivalent. What are some equivalent tools? What are alternatives to Data Studio, for example? We have companies like Power BI powered by Microsoft. And we also have companies like one of the very first data visualization tools was Tableau, right? So we can use also to create amazing reports to enhance basically our data storytelling and the way we consume data. So these are a couple of tools, again, that we have to visualize data. You don't need all of them. You need the one that works for you, that you like the interface, how it works, that connects with the channels that you want and is the most effective for your organization. Now, 
there are a couple of other tools that I'm just going to call them miscellaneous tools or tools basically that will help you to research the markets that are also very important and not a lot of us know them. You all know tools like Google Trends, for example, or certain tools perhaps that are very mainstream uh, in the market to, uh, to fetch data, right? But there are three of them that I can't pick that you may not know and are very, very interesting and very important in the context of market research. One of them is called Spark Toro. So Spark Toro is a tool created by the ex-founder of SEO Moz. And it is basically self-identifying as a search engine for audience intelligence. What does this mean? So Spark Toro is a tool that is obviously freemium again and half paid, but there is a free trial or you can use certain features for free that can help you understand a lot about your company's audience. You can come here, for example, under the audience intelligence tab, and you can say, my audience frequently talks about something, or my audience follows certain social accounts, or my audience uses the hashtag, let's say, coffee. And my audience also, let's say, lives in maybe New York. Obviously, it works much better if you are based in USA, but it caters to all the markets globally. And then the tool will help you to understand a little bit more about this audience, right? So it will help you to understand perhaps what are the keywords that they most often use, what are the actual demographics of this audience, which uh, social media accounts they follow, which websites they actually visit, which podcasts they listen to, which YouTube channels they subscribe to and so forth. Obviously you can see the data are great because the tool is freemium. But I think you get the context, right? Is a is a intelligence, an audience intelligence tool that if you hire it, you are going to get a lot of useful information on your audience. Another tool that is also an intelligence tool in the context of social media is Social Blade. Many of you may have heard about it. So Social Blade is a tool that uh, I think I closed the link. Just give me one moment. No, I never brought the link. So Social Blade is basically a tool that you can visit and you can assess perhaps basically how a, a profile does on the web, right? So I'm just going to, let's say, go with a random profile here, which is a sports website from Greece. And then the tool will basically scan the YouTube channel, the Instagram account or whatever, let's say we want to uh, investigate and it's going to tell you, let's say, how many people subscribe, the subscriber rank, the country rank, it's going to give you trend lines, it's going to actually give you a list of, let's say, the follower growth, whether we're talking Instagram or Facebook. It is not entirely free. Again, maybe if you want to get more data, you can subscribe or you can get a free trial, but it is very effective to get some information that are very, very important if you are in uh, the context of social media. There is another tool that I often use, and it's also based in Singapore, if I'm not mistaken, which is called Analisa.io, just to promote our local uh, homegrown startups, right? Which kind of does the same thing for various, let's say, profiles of Instagram or TikTok. So you actually give a profile here, and the tool is going to analyze basically the performance of this profile competitive intelligence basically or uh, influencer marketing you can use it in a lot of different uh, contexts and scenarios right so the tool will tell you the engagement rate the like rate the comment rate how many followers they have how many people they are following maybe it will give you a graph that is relevant to the average engagement over time and i think if you have the paid version it's going to give you also information on let's say post performance for this specific, uh, let's say, influencer, right? Uh, so all these insights will be very useful if you are shopping for influencers, perhaps. And the last tool that I have on this list is also an intelligence tool, and it's called Sensor Tower. So what is Sensor Tower? Sensor Tower is a tool that will help you understand how mobile apps are performing. And again, it is basically not free. 
it is a freemium tool. So it's going to give you some information for free and then you'll have to start the free trial or subscribe. But you're going to find a lot of very valuable information, especially if you are, live, if you are living in a world of mobile apps, right? So the tool will tell you how many downloads this website, uh, let's say, has in a given month, how much revenue they make. Apparently, Candy Crush is a very big business, as you can see. Um, what are the keywords that this app is showing for? It will give you basically the follows, uh, the app downloads minus, let's say, uh, churn every month, positive versus negative reviews, and a lot more information, of course, if you have the paid version of the tool, right? So that's Sensor Tower for those of you who are uh, dealing with mobile apps. And finally, before we actually go to your questions, they have one last tool that, in my opinion, is one of the most productive and, let's say, most amazing tools that we have out there, but also the most underrated and a tool that not a lot of you perhaps know, which is called Zapier. So what does Zapier do? Zapier does a very important job of connecting two seamlessly different tools with each other. I'll give you a couple of examples of how I use it. So let's say you have a Facebook lead campaign and you want perhaps, let's say, to send an email every time there is a lead, you want basically this lead to go to your client. Zapier can do that. You have a lead generation campaign on LinkedIn and every time someone subscribes, you want this to go to Google Sheets. Zapier can do that. You have a type form and people apply for a job through this type form and you want every time that you receive an application to receive a Slack message. Zapier can do that. You have a type form on the site or a form on the site and you want every time someone fills in the form to get a Slack message with the details of the person who filled in the form. Zapier can do that. So that's the job of Zapier. It takes any tool and it communicates information to another tool, which may you may not be able to relate immediately, but is very, very important and very effective. And that's why I'm actually a little bit over elaborating here, because let's say, for example, I upload the file in your Dropbox, you want to receive a notification instead of checking your Dropbox, let's say every five minutes, right? So Zapier can help you do that. You can actually create a flow where when somebody drops, let's say a file into Dropbox, you get a Slack message that there is a new file basically in your Dropbox, right? Uh, so it can uh, help you to minimize admin work um, as much as possible for your business. And that's all the tools that I listed. So the top 10 of every category, actually, not just 10 tools, because what I realized basically is that we can't just cover everything with 10 tools. In the world that we live in with digital actually um, taking over everything, 10 tools are very few actually to use in the context of any company, right? So we probably need more. Uh, so I try to keep out all the tools that are very, very mainstream, and most of us use like Zooms, Slacks, and all that, or project management tools, and communicate some tools that are important for every category. Okay, great. So let's go to Q&A. We have one question from Ashley. Could you please explain the difference between Google Search Console and Google Analytics? Yes. So Google Search Console only caters to search engine optimization. So Google Search Console does two things, right? It will tell you how well or not well you are performing in the context of SEO. So in the context of SEO, meaning the data that you're going to get here in Search Console are going to reveal, let's say, how many times you saw ad up on search. So when people type in something, how many times you show up, the tool is going to tell you how many clicks you got from Google search. The tool is going to tell you what is your average position, in what position your website showed up when people typed in on Google search, and also your click through rate. And the tool will also help you to, um, let's say, optimize certain areas of your website. It will help you to monitor what we call indexation, for example, how many pages are indexed by Google. It will help you to monitor your page experience. It will help you to customize 
few settings like geo-targeting for SEO. Google Analytics now is a melting pot. Google Analytics will tell you not only how much traffic is coming from organic search, but Google Analytics is a tool that will tell you how much traffic is coming from email marketing, from Facebook, from affiliates, from referrals, from display, from paid channels, from organic channels, and not only how much traffic is coming from these channels, but it's going to tell you when these people arrive on the site, what actions do they take? How long they stay on your website? What are the pages that they visit? So Google Analytics is a tool that is much broader when it comes to into the context of, let's say, analytics, much more valuable, I would say, and much more useful in a way. Search Console is a specialized tool. So Search Console is a tool that we use only for search engine optimization, which means organic search. Google Analytics is a tool that will tell you how much traffic is coming from various places and what people do when they come on your website, right? So it's very, very different as a tool. Uh, actually, they have nothing to do with each other. Uh, Google Analytics is one of the tools that, for me, is, is the cornerstone of every marketing department, right? So we need to have Google Analytics in order to, to monitor how well or not well we are doing uh, when it comes to the various marketing initiatives, campaigns that we run. Search Console is a tool that you're only going to have if you really want to focus on search engine optimization and you want to be serious about it, right? So that's the difference. In your opinion, who do you think is the winner among AFs, SEMRAS, and MOS? Um, so first of all, these three tools actually are not exactly the same with each other, right? So SEMRAS is a very powerful tool, obviously, that a lot of you know. That's why I didn't include it in my presentation, but it's kind of an all-in-one tool. All-in-one tool means that it will help you to keyword research, it will help you with your paid search, it will help you with your SEO, it will help you in general with your search engine marketing. And recently also they started, uh, let's say, expanding in other areas. AREFs is more specialized. So if you ask my opinion, AREFs is probably the best pure SEO tool. So, and that's my opinion, right? So if you want a tool that will, will let's say, help you only on search engine optimization, I think that the best tool in the market is AREFs. Uh, SEO Moz also it started being like a pure SEO tool, then they started to venture out uh, in different areas. Then they went back to SEO. It's a legacy tool. It's one of the oldest tools, but I think AREFs is probably a little bit better. And that's, again, my opinion. Uh, but if you want something more holistic, so if you want something that can bring together both paid and also organic, SEMRAS is probably a better choice because it can merge the two worlds right into one. What can Google Tag Manager help you with? Google Tag Manager is extremely important because you have a website, right? So when you have a website, you are going to, to use a lot of different trackers. I'll give you an example, right? So you want to install Google Analytics in your website. This is one tool that you want to use. How can Google Analytics monitor, let's say, who comes on your website? It cannot really happen magically. You need to take a tracking code and install it in the back of your website. Then you want Facebook, the Facebook pixel to be installed on your website because you want, let's say, to activate the marketing campaigns. You want to track, let's say, how many people click something on Facebook and buy on your website and so forth. So then you need to install the Facebook pixel in the back of your website. Then you need also the Google Ads pixel or the Google Ads tag because you are using Google Ads and you want to run remarketing campaigns through Google Ads. And therefore, you need to install the pixel in the back of your website. And then you're going to use Crete also for remarketing. And this also works with, with a pixel. And then perhaps you want to use Hotjar because you want, let's say, to monitor uh, how people use your website, be able to generate heat maps, scroll maps, recordings, and so forth. So in order to use Hotjar, you need to take a tracking code, a pixel, and install it in your back of your website. And then you want also, when you go to your Google Analytics, you want not only to be able to see how many people come to your website, but you want to see how many people come to your website and fill in a form, for example, or fill in 
uh, let's say, or click on certain buttons or buy something or take a key action, which means that you will need to uh, register what we call events. So every time that we come, for example, on our uh, Google Analytics account, we can see not only how many people come, but how many people download the PDF, how many people, let's say, complete the form, how many people play a video, how many people do everything and anything. All these pixels now, you have two choices, right? You have one choice to take all these pixels and insert them manually, which means super old school. I'm just going to send them to my developer. My developer is going to basically come to uh, my website basically here. It's going to go in the back, open a gap and paste the, the pixel in, very old school. Or you need the Google Tag Manager. The Google Tag Manager is a must-have tool if you want my opinion, right? So you can't. You can live without it, but your life is going to be very messy. It's as if you are living in a house without electricity or water, for example, right? So the Google Tag Manager will help you to connect all these tools with your website. This is the job of the tool. You're going to say, I want to use, let's say, let me find, for example, here, Hotjar. And this is the tracking code, and I want to connect it to all my website pages. I want to use Google Analytics 4, and you can connect it to your website. I want to register an event that I want to see on my Google Analytics, and you can do that through the Tag Manager. You want to set up conversion tracking through, let's say, Google Ads, you can do that with the Google Tag Manager. You want to install the Facebook Pixel, you can do that with the Google Tag Manager. You want to use even more specialized tools like Google Optimize, Again, you will need a tracking code. You, you can connect this tracking code with your Google Tag Manager. So the Google Tag Manager is a tool that allows you to install tracking codes and set up conversion tracking or events tracking for different tools. Um, that's what the tool does. And organize all your tracking and all the different tools that you're using, right? It may sound very techy, but trust me is, again, maybe a better real life analogy is Imagine you are going to build a house without foundation. So a Google Tag Manager is the foundation for everything to work. Or even better, imagine you're going to build a house that is not going to have any plugs or is not going to have any pipes for water. So yes, you have a house, which is your website or your mobile app, but now you want, let's say, to have a PC or your laptop, you want a camera, you want, let's say, uh, your bathroom to have a shower, and then they tell you, oh, now you cannot connect anything. So Google Tag Manager is doing this very important job of connecting everything with your website, right? That's why you, you need to have the tool or someone within your team needs to have it, right? Is there a way to use a Facebook page not as personal profile across mobile and desktop for all purposes? Liking, commenting, not just viewing. I think you can do that actually, right? So I think you can like and comment and use a Facebook page and let's say use a Facebook page as if is a person, right? So if let's say you go to your Facebook page uh, and to be fair, this question caught me off guard because I'm not a personal user of Facebook, although I have a Facebook pages. And the fun part is I work also for them. <laughs> I don't remember now how you can do that, but I think you can, uh, yeah, choose how to interact basically, right? So when you come to your Facebook page, then one thing that you will see is this button on the right corner that tells you choose how to interact. So if somebody, let's say, comments or interacts with your page, you can choose if you want to reply as a as a page or if you want to reply as a uh, as a person. And I believe that if you are managing pages, you can do the same thing through your regular feed. Uh, so you can potentially perhaps let's say, come here and choose, for example, how you want to uh, to use Facebook. If you want to use Facebook as a as let's say a profile, or if you want to use the Facebook as a page. But let me actually dig a little bit more into it because I honestly don't remember how exactly to do it. I'm fairly sure it can happen. If you want, send me a message on LinkedIn, and if I found it, I'll I'll let you know. Right, but I'm pretty sure you can switch your profile and interact as a page. Uh, just have to find exactly where is the setting 
that you have to go. Cool. So, is there any GTM specific webinar available from the past sessions or upcoming ones? Uh, I believe there should be. There should be a lot of webinars uh, that are also available to um, relevant to, to Google Tag Manager, right? So, if you go to uh, maybe the general assembly schedule, you can have a look at all the upcoming webinars. But I'm pretty sure that there are going to be a lot of trainings regarding this software. Great. So that's all the questions that I can see, at least in the Q&A. Any other questions or any other thoughts, perhaps for the last five minutes? Or is that all? No other questions or thoughts? Okay, great. So I hope that you got your hands into a lot of tools or you got maybe a little bit of inspiration to dig through some of these tools and see what they can do for your business. Have a great evening or a great day, depending on your time zone. And I'm going to pass the mic back to Murnal now to close the session. Thank you so much, Sotiris. Um, that was, you know, such an insightful session, and I'm sure I'm going to get lots of requests uh, to share the recordings of this one, uh, just to make sure that we can have all the links. So, fret not, um, everyone who's joined this session, we will be sharing the recording uh, within the next couple of days, and you know, you can take a look at all the tools that Sotiris has shared with you then as well. So yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for joining, and have a good evening or night, depending on where you're joining us from. Thank you.